Hello everyone, welcome back to Hills and Haulers Homestead. Mike here with Boris, and Boris is now officially a full-time or a full-fledged uh, pig pen dweller. <laughs> I took out the center section there that we had where I had him divided off, and today I opened up the, the whole pen. Of course, I did put the gate here, just the pallet, uh, to keep him from getting out and to keep the other pigs from getting in. But this increased his pen size from 16 by 16 to 16 by 48, and uh, He's all right. He's just sniffing around and trying to teach him where the water is now on the barrel, on the water or on the nipples there. So he's happy. He's sniffing, rooting, running. <laughs> he's been doing all right. I got the electric turned off right now, so he's okay. He want to play rough? Wanna play rough? <laughs> he's been happy ever since I've done it. Lots of energy. Good guy. All right. So, I give him a couple weeks in here like this. Like I said, I'm gonna turn the electric back on now, but I give him a couple weeks in here um, to get used to this. And then hopefully, I don't know, uh, depending on weather, the weather's so crazy. I mean, today's another t-shirt and short kind of day. It was 21 degrees this morning. And uh, by 11 o'clock, it's t-shirt and shorts weather. So I'm out here in it. And uh, then we're supposed to get a whole bunch of rain and like mid to high 40s. Low to, low to the high 40s is gonna be the highest over the next week or so. So I'm just taking advantage of it. Anyways, all right. USDA came up today and they did their little site survey. And with spring development, now the spring that I want developed is out over the hill right there. So it can't be done for this pig area because this pig area is still uphill from it. And since we're going gravity fed spring, we're going to go ahead and just plan ahead now for the next few weeks um, to get the new paddock done for the pigs and that will come off of this gate right here and we'll go down between that corridor of trees right there so right straight down through there and then go over and then over the hill down to the top of the bottom meta and then back out around and that will encompass essentially this entire hillside here behind me where the pigs are currently at right now this will get here I'll show you all right, so where the, the pig pen is currently, or the pig paddock is currently, it goes right down over the hill to a corner post right there, and then goes that way. This new paddock will, will encompass all of this through here, and this is all Japanese stilt grass, which no other animal will eat, and that's why it's been proliferative in this area, uh, but the pigs eat it, so because there's no more of this in that paddock. So this will all get, and I'll run everything right up along these trees here. And it'll come right between these two trees to this, this corner of this tree. And then down over the hill, then it'll go that way. And there's a, a drainage ditch that separates this meta and the other meta over there. And then it'll run down along that. Now, this will come out to the side of the drainage ditch and then right across the top of this meta right here, just outside of the wood line, all the way down. And where the existing fence line is here, you can see the corner of it right there. This will hook into it uh, way down there and it'll come up and just tie into it there and that'll keep a complete closed circuit and that will encompass all of these woods here this whole area and I mean that's that's 80 yards down over the hill at least it'll go down there's an old logging road there and then it'll go back up this way and then down to a corner and then right back out across the top of this meadow here so and this is of course where all the the uh, lambs are going to go, so I've got all this fence down through there over to the road, out this way, and then down and around and up my driveway to the corner of my barn over there. I know it's hard to see on the video. It's all right, but that's the plan. So hopefully get this done, be able to get started on this in the next few weeks. I'm going to have to set some wood posts along the way, um, especially once I hit the field down here. So I'm going to get a, a handheld auger. Uh, engine powered auger because it's just too steep to put a tractor on it and try to think you're going to get anything 
uh, worthwhile of trying to sink a post in. So we'll get I'll buy one of those here in a couple of weeks and uh, we'll start setting some wood posts and stuff. But that'll allow them this whole lower access. And then, you know, in the need, when I need to, I can separate, put the hog and the boar down here and the pig and the piglets up here or vice versa. And that will keep them separated. Now, the spring is severely overgrown and it hasn't worked. It hasn't come out of the pipe in several years here. See all this Japanese stilt grass in here? This is all invasive stuff. You can mow it, you can do everything you want to with it and it ain't going away. And I didn't brush hog any of this this year. The cost of fuel and everything, it really wasn't that big a deal to me. So I just let it kind of grow. When fuel prices or my pay improves, <laughs> maybe I'll think about brush hogging. All right, so this, you can see how overgrown this is. And we used to come up here and just uh, fill our water bottles up and stuff out of the right out of the end of this pipe now there's a black plastic pipe that runs out i got this covering it here this plastic pvc pipe but this bathtub here has been here for decades but you can see here where it's no longer running out of the pipe but it's coming out of the hillside all through here around it so i don't know there's no indication if there was ever a spring box back in there or what um so it may have collapsed over the years i just don't know for some reason it's just not flowing so the idea is to get this cleaned out of here, get this redeveloped to where they can set up and, and develop this spring. And then we can run it downhill and even put a cistern in here. To kind of collect and hold. And then the new pig paddock, when I run it, well, the third one, not the second one, when I run the third one, it'll encompass this. I don't want the pigs over top of the spring to contaminate the spring, so it'll probably come just down the inside side of this fork tree right here and down through here. But that's this is why I want to get them in here. And if they get that developed, I can actually get in here and run water down to a little trough I could set right here in the woods and set it there even just uh, for the pigs for a water source and then splice off it and go right down over to the barn to a hydrant to a couple more troughs to want to get the lambs in there. And that'll be my, my main water source from right there. So what he told me today was when we come up here and looked at all this, he said, because your spring actually sets uh, lower than your current pig paddock, he said, you get that second pig paddock in, get the fence in place. He said, then we can develop the spring. He said, we can't do it until that's done. I said, okay, fine. So we'll get that done. I was hoping to get it done through the winter anyways, but I just moved up my timeline. Eventually when I do the third paddock, it'll get all this out through here as well. And, uh, you can see this is just so overgrown so densely underbrushed that it needs animals it, it, it doesn't need a forester mulcher it doesn't need none of it. it needs animals in here is what it needs so that's what we're going to get in here and uh, let them do the good thing and do the right thing and clear it like it should be and then there's also a reseeding program that the usda offers that i'm they're going to get me in and uh, in on as well to reseed and get some more native species back in here because if you look at this right now most of what this is is just an overgrowth of some native species but there's also like i said the japanese stilt grass the uh the, the asian bittersweet and stuff in here that just chokes out the top of the weeds of the leaf of the trees i get my vocabulary right today and um there is a seed bank of course in the, in the current soil it's just what they refer to as the ancient seed banks of the native species and they've just been kept dormant because of the amount of overgrowth of the uh, invasive species so if you can get the invasive species out, your seed bank of your native species is still there and it can come back up because it, it'll have the opportunity to because it's not choked out by all these invasive type species and stuff. So proceeding with some native species will actually help that along as well. Ow! <laughs> Hang on, briars. So anyways, and that's what uh, the plan is now to get that done, get the fence done, and then they can add this the spring development to the plan where the greenhouse is going to go the high tunnel so there's a lot of uh ups and downs with it so what i mean by that is is there's a few things that have to be done has to be done before they'll consider it so as long as i can get everything ready by march i should be okay and good to go and that includes there should be an active garden at in the footprint of where the uh 
the uh, high tunnel is going to go. And I told him, I said, well, we don't have that because of the clay soil. So if I get all that cleared out of there and ready, till a little garden, plant some seeds in it, then that covers that part. So <laughs> I'll have to clear a little garden because it has to be an active garden uh, to qualify for it. So I'll have to do that. So there's, there's so many just loophole regulations and stuff in place. But And I understand why they do that, again, because they're not going to commit to funding and resources to things that are currently not in place so they can't do it again like on what we have planned and you know when you have a full-time job you have other responsibilities and stuff it's hard to keep up with this kind of stuff but you know it's coming along i've done you know little bit by little bit what i can get done here and uh, made little improvements along the way this is a bad time of year because everything's just dingy brown this is all Japanese stilt grass and a bunch of briars and stuff in here. So this stuff became, it, it became invasive to this area or to West Virginia. I think it started in Tennessee and worked its way up here if I remember the history of it. And it was used as a packing material in shipping and stuff. Um, because it, it dries up, it's real fluffy and everything. But the seeds on it are just crazy. And as, as soon as it dries, seeds are all over the place. So it is spread everywhere and this being an old mining community where the old mines used to be part of this property but especially down here the old rail yard used to be across the road down over in that holla big rail yard the tipple this was the maintenance garage here there was a big building here so welcome to west virginia it's a honeycomb of mines the whole state is but you know this all used to be part of the mine and stuff like that and then there's a road over here that was where the, um, what they called trainer row, and it's where the, uh, the they kept and housed the, the mules to pull the coal loads out of the mines because that's where all the trainers lived that took care of and uh, trained the mules and stuff. So all that's back down the road here and up the hollow a little bit, and we actually own right up to that. So good history here, pretty interesting. But typical West Virginia topography, as you see, he <laughs> <It> goes <laughs> and then down <laughs> and then of course everything's uh hills hollows mountains and valleys i mean that's what you have um but you know that that's how this stuff came to be because the mines all the machine parts and everything like that or anything that they had shipped in the old company store used to be right down here um and uh you know everything that they got fragile stuff things that needed to have padding and packing come with japanese stilt grass in it so that's how it got up here and got proliferative proliferative in in this area in this part of west virginia and all parts of west virginia pretty much but again pigs are the only ones that will eat it no other animal will eat it deer won't eat it even goats won't eat it but pigs will so good on the pigs but you can see this is just this is what we deal with and to get in there that would take a forestry mulcher because i wouldn't want to do that by hand i've done a lot of that by hand and i don't want to do that again so <laughs> i'm gonna put the animals to work so again, any federal program that you deal with, even with USDA and the headaches and the pain in the butts that that causes, it's still worth it in the end because the cost that it's going to come back to being just for us a 10% cost, which means that, you know, again, if it's a $5,000 project for the greenhouse and everything, we're on the hook for $500. And as, if they put a well in, um, then the well, uh, if it's $20,000, it's going to be $2,000 out of our pocket. And wells typically start at about twenty thousand dollars in west virginia so the good thing is is we live in an area here where all of the hills are very very wet a lot of water in these mountains and stuff like that uh this hill over here behind me across the road where all the old company houses used to be or at least a section of them there was i think three or four wells right over there that were community wells and uh, provided good water this spring right here actually there used to be the pipe actually used to run clear around the hill down through here to a cistern house down here and it went from the cistern house down to the main road at an intersection down here and uh it, it was pretty much a community well people come and fill their, their jugs and stuff up there and it provided water for the part of the community as well because there's nothing up here to contaminate it and it was deep enough to where it wasn't anything that they have to worry about surface runoff and like i said we used to fill our water bottles up and uh, jugs and stuff up here all the time and drink out of it so completely safe but we'll hopefully get it redeveloped and then I'll run a, a line down down to the barn down here and put one or two hydrants down there gravity fed hydrants that way I can feed um, the animals or water the animals down there when we get those them in there 
So there's still a lot to do. Again, this is just planning ahead. The fence is going to be our first priority to get that done very soon uh, because I definitely want to have it done um, as soon as I can. So uh, weather going to be depending for the next about 10 days. It's just not going to be worth it or even uh, feasible to even try to get out here and think we're going to do anything, especially on the side of a hill. So we'll work towards it in the next several weeks and hopefully get it done. Um, it's not hard work, but there is a lot of work involved in it to do. So we're going to work towards that and hopefully get our greenhouse and everything. And we'll just see. If not, we still got our raised beds and we'll still go that way. Um, the other thing we were looking at, I, and I got to say, the prices of things are just crazy. So in 2018, when we bought our, uh, our building up here, it's a 14 by 28. And same company, same style, same everything. I think it was just just over seven thousand dollars delivered and that same exact building today is eleven thousand uh, dollars because we were talking about getting uh, another building for storage and stuff and to get some of my tools and stuff out of the basement my woodworking tools and everything eleven thousand dollars and we've yet to build a garage <laughs> so i think what we're going to do is just uh focus everything on maybe uh, towards the end of next summer, uh, beginning of next fall, and just uh, build a garage and have a section of the garage as a workshop and then three stalls for the vehicles and stuff like that. So we're gonna do what we're gonna do. Hopefully the economy doesn't fall apart any worse than what it already has. If it does, it does. We'll just have to make do with what we got and uh, trying to think or come up with other ways to do it. But that's it long one today sorry almost 17 minutes so with that i'll leave you and i'll say get prepared stay prepared take care and god bless